Hello my little demons, Jules here for WhatCulture.com in a slightly different and altogether more echoey form but still here presenting to you the piping hot piss that is Choose Your Own Adventure, the awesomely named and awfully hosted weekly format where I appear in live action to deliver a list chosen by you, little tykes. And today we have Jake Lance to thank for this quite curiously titled 10 Terrible Mini Games That Blocked Progression in Their Own Titles. Now what this means is that video games that just popped up in the main story that were unavoidable. And it's the thing, I usually love a good minigame. I mean, it's a fresh experience, a new challenge for the player, but they do come with a hefty price tag. And by that, I mean that you better bloody well hope that your mechanics and controls are up to scratch and immediately accessible for the player, because otherwise, we're well, gonna end up on this list, buddy boy. Little, little slap on the wrist here. Apologies, by the way, in advance, if I look down, my script is literally here on a teleprompter and I've got to kind of do it, but it's, quite obvious when I'm doing it, but I think that given the circumstances, you'll cut me some slack. Please. I'm bold, I've got nothing else. What I'm trying to say is that sometimes trying something new isn't needed when you're already good at everything else. That would be like me trying to start weightlifting when I've already got a world-class dad bod on the go. It's just not needed. So with this in mind, let's take a look at 10 of the worst mini games crucial to complete their games. But before we begin, just remember this. You can pop your suggestions, don't know why I got so angry there. Remember this, you can pop your suggestions down below of what, what you'd like to see next week and I'll grab them, eat them up, pass them through my system and turn them into a lovely list. But until that point, let's get on with this one. That's a clap on the different side. Look at the sacrifices I'm having to make. Number 10, Asteroid Shooting, Dead Space. So, Dead Space is arguably one of the finest games of its generation, and sure, Dead Space 3 was a bit different, shall we say, but for the most part, the franchise delivered on the spooky space scares pretty well. However, there was one section that was pretty much widely loathed and, of course, entirely mandatory, which was when you have to take control of a cannon and shoot down asteroids that are coming towards you. Now, what makes this so frustrating is because it's very easy to be overwhelmed by the projectiles, and that means that basically you'll end up getting destroyed over and over and over and over and over. <laughs> and over again. Now, you can do yourself a favor by turning the game's brightness up to max to make the asteroids as visible as possible, but why should you do that? Why should you mess around with your TV just to get through a mini game? I mean, I don't like it. And also, your little spooter of a cannon just decides to overheat all of the time. It's got like three good ropes left in it. I mean, shots. I definitely meant shots. There's exhilarating challenge, and then there's this. And this can forward itself to a salty bumhole. Number nine, hacking, Bioshock. Oh, I don't wanna talk bad about a game that I love. It, it's, it's harder than me trying to keep the cats that Kerry's got here out of this room while I'm recording. I can hear him scratching now. Stop. <laughs> So here's the thing, the hacking minigame in Bioshock commits two cardinal sins. One, it's incredibly frequent, meaning you're doing it all the time, and two, it's incredibly boring. And for narrative reasons, it makes no sense whatsoever. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Spider Slicer, do you mind not throwing your fish hooks into my spine while I try and get a discounted box of ammo? It doesn't work. Why did they think that hacking needed to be this sort of pipe dream-esque tile puzzle? I love this game. But I hate this. I hate it real bad, brother. Now, mercifully, Bioshock 2 streamlined this hacking quite a lot, and then... God, I can't believe that I'm actually praising this more than the other two tiles, and then Infinite, they got rid of it altogether, which was probably the best thing they could have done. Is it the thing that I hate the most about Bioshock? No, it's the, it's the Atlas boss battle. That definitely is the worst thing about the first game. That was pretty piss. But this... Well, this is like shitting in a sieve. Just unnecessary and a waste of a sieve. <laughs> Don't know where I was going with that. <gasps> Number eight, Ocelot's Torture, Metal Gear Solid. So Metal Gear Solid features one of the most iconic and infamous minigames, and say it with me, kids. 
again. That was more annoying than it usually is. I apologize for that. I'm going a bit insane. And it's not just infamous because of the fact that you get to see his low res chest on show here. No, 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 no. It's because you're strapped inside this electrical device and you're basically shocked to death and you've got to stop your life bar from draining by mashing circle like that. And it erodes your patience quicker than going out with your dog and watching it for 30 minutes decide whether or not it needs a dump and then it doesn't do anything. Brilliant. No, mate. You should my rug. And the worst part is, there's actually repercussions for failure. I mean, you don't die, the game carries on, but you get the terrible ending where Meryl dies, and that is no bueno. That means that if you want the good ending, you'll have to finger like you've never fingered before. And trust me, your partner got in touch with me, and you're coming up short, pal. What resulted was something that was next to impossible to do, and it meant that most experienced players were the only people that actually saw the non-downer ending, and the others had to go and buy a knockoff controller from that dodgy guy down the market to even hope to see the other ending. No bueno terms too. Number seven, Sauron boss fight, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Now this is the thing, I was only going to allow myself one pure QTE section on this list because honestly there are so many bad ones out there that I could have filled this list entirely with them, but then I thought that, you know, it would be unfair. But there was one that really aped my grapes and that was the final battle against Sauron in Middle-earth Shadow of Mordor. Now throughout this game you've been tackling the dark power piece by piece, deconstructing his control over the land and building up a ragtag group of friends and it felt brilliant to bring everything, the power of Mordor, the might of Mordor to its knees using the fantastic nemesis system. And for a game that focused so much on making random enemies feel like huge threats, it absolutely balls up its final conflict, which as you guessed it, boiled down to a QTE. I don't want to take the fight to the biggest bad in Mordor and have him go down to a few button presses. That's just so unsatisfying. And it's actually happened before in other games, like I was saying, like Vas from Far Cry 3, he went down in a QT section as well. The chump? Basically, his ring wasn't the only one that was stinging after this encounter, and yes, I know that technically they're both boss battles that I have mentioned here, but still, they're so bad that I had to put them on the list. Number 6. Bringing down the Star Destroyer – Star Wars The Force Unleashed Star Wars The Force Unleashed was an absolute blast from start to finish, and so much so that as soon as I'd finished it, I'd actually booted it back up to take on storm powers with all of my new powers. But there was one moment that I saw approaching on the horizon again on the second playthrough that filled me with dread because of what a piece of Sith it actually was, and that was taking down the Star Destroyer. Now, this was used heavily in the marketing for the game, with Starkiller pulling it down and just made you wanted to go, yes, yes, I want a piece of that. But when you finally got there, my god was it bad. The controls were just completely, completely counterintuitive. It had the thumbsticks come up on screen saying, oh, you need to kind of do this, but you would press them and then it would be like, nah, pal, that's not how it works here today. Sorry, chum, we're sold out of frozen food, you know what I'm saying? It didn't help matters as well, the fact that TIE fighters were constantly screaming by, meaning that you had to stop playing whoopsie daisy with it to then just go, oh, naff off a bit, get out of here, karate chop left, karate chop right, and then you would go back to taking down the Star Destroyer. If you were on that Star Destroyer, you'd be like, oh no, we're gonna crash! What's going on? Why have we stopped? Why are we going back up again? Oh no, we're gonna crash! You can only be in terror so much before they'd probably just be like, oh, we're gonna crash. Yeah, it was sh Number 5. Skirmishes Nino Kuni Tuni Revenant Kingdom. Right, so hands up, I absolutely loved this game, and I know that it divided people a little because the narrative was more padded than one of our videos trying to hit that sweet 10 minute ad revenue point, you know. <laughs> and there were lots of side quests that had no reason other than just to stop the story mid flow just so you wouldn't rush from A to B, but the characters were so lovable, and the narrative when it actually got going was fantastic, and that battle system. ASMR kiss for you. Yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. One thing that I really didn't enjoy, though, was the skirmishes. Oh, that's a bad miss. They were just so utterly soulless, and while the concept of a 10-year-old taking on mythical creatures into battle with him to battle other mythical creatures was amazing, all it boiled down to was walk forward, smash this, fall back, recover, smash again, you're done in 5-10 to 10 minutes. What is this, my first sexual encounter? 
And annoyingly, there are more than a few times when the Evermore army has to gather together in the main story, and at no point does it feel grandiose or epic in the slightest. And that is a shame. Number four, the gummy ship, Kingdom Hearts. Now here's the thing, Square Enix pulled off a masterstroke when they managed to tie their own Final Fantasy IPs together with Disney. But it's proved that not everything should be squished and squashed because we got the squishy squashy gummy ship sections which were tosh toilet. So players use a customized ship to travel between game worlds and it's at this point Kingdom Hearts stops being a fantastical adventure and becomes a boring on the rail shooter that feels disconnected from everything else. And your ship looks absolutely terrible no matter what bits you try to stick on it, and it results in an experience that's draining from start to finish. Like, I get that you can make it look like a weird tower block, but you're just basically flying a bit of really badly animated Lego through an even worse programmed ripoff of a space shooter. It didn't need to be in here. The game even knows it doesn't need to be in there because it sells you warp tech further down the line, skipping these things or shortening them entirely. That's when you know it's bad, but not bad enough apparently that they decided to keep it going in uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 and 3. I mean, admittedly they got a bit better, but in the first one, come on. Come on, man. I'll buy the fact that Donald and Goofy are epic warriors, but I ain't buying that. Mm -mm -mm. I sound like I was gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry about it. Number three, the racetrack, Mafia. Now though the Mafia games largely focused on like cruising around the city, smoking a fat cigar and then shooting people in the face, the fifth level of the first game, Fair Play, was when this mini game of a racetrack came into question. And it was utterly challenging. And mainly because the car that you're tasked with driving is tough enough to control while maintaining a high speed. And honestly, I think the car from fucking Monopoly would handle better. So what this means is that you're likely going to be spending a lot of time flipping this beast, losing the race, and likely your life as well. And that's not fun. It, in fact, it was so bad that 2K had to patch it to allow people to lower the difficulty in order to make it easier for them to get through. Now, it was a really good idea, it's just that Mafia should have stuck to the thumb screws and doing over mob bosses rather than screwing around with racetracks. Number 2. Blitzball Final Fantasy X Right, okay, so here's the thing. I genuinely love Blitzball deep down. I re remember how cool it looked in the opening with that Rammstein but not Rammstein song that was going on. Don't you give up on it. The bat the ham feeds you. I sounded like a, like a sort of like new metal farmer then. <laughs> But apparently, I'm in the minority here because after looking online, loads of people were not getting wet over this aqua-based sport at all, and so I have to put it on this list. And, and to be fair, I can see some of the like some of the complaints. I mean, for example, it's not a very fluid game despite the setting. I mean, you only move on one movement plane, and the stats grind was a bit of a headache. And there were tons of rules that didn't make too much sense. I mean, plus, if you did get jacked shot too, you were pretty much unstoppable. And it did take a lot of time to get good at it. And you had to go through the entire league in order to get Wacker's special weapon. And in the main storyline, you played it and it teaches you everything. And then it ditches you after one game to carry on with Yuna getting kidnapped. Which meant you spent about 30 minutes learning something that you only got to put into practice for like five minutes. Actually, yeah, you know what? Blitzball sucks in the main story. If you want to do it in the pastime, as like the side activity, great fun. Great fun indeed. Football manager, levels of good. But wetter. You know what, I actually don't know where I sit on this now that I've reviewed that information. I'll tell you what, you decide. I want you to type in the comments, tits ball if you think it was good, or blitz balls if you thought it was bad in Final Fantasy X. Let's let you guys decide, shall we? And number one, fishing near. Now, fishing mini games are almost always optional. Though in typical player baiting ha 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 fashion, Nier offers an initially compulsory fishy minigame that also happens to be one of the most infuriatingly obtuse ever made. Now, first off, the in game explanation of how to actually catch the fish is scarcely coherent at the best of times, and many players were then enraged to discover that they weren't even fishing in the right space. That's right, the single fish that you needed in order to move the story forward wasn't actually even able to be caught in the area that you were headed to. You had to go to this place that had a red X on the map to find the fish. But, in a small act of mercy I guess, 
If you failed catching the fish enough times, it would automatically be added to your inventory. But it did mean that people just thought that that was the way you got it by failing for hours and hours and hours and then got it. And there was a, like a guide that really stressed it. it was like, no, 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 go here and you'll catch it within your first or second time. Absolutely ridiculous. Hilarious in a way that people could waste their amount of time, but also bad, bad developer thing on there. So fishing, more like fishy, fish off. I do think that I've gone a bit mad recording in this format. I wonder where that fish has gone. Fishy, 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 fish. Anyway, that was the end of Choose Your Own Adventure. <laughs> yes, that is the end of Choose Your Own Adventure for this week. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope that my home studio setup was okay. It will likely change over the coming weeks. So please bear with me. And you know what? Drop me a follow at RetroJ with a zero. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I hope that you and your family are doing well. These are... These are strange times indeed, and as much as I am trying to carry on some sense of normality, it's not something that we can just ignore, right? So just remember whether you're isolating yourself or not at the moment, and you really should be just making sure that you care for your fellow neighbor. I just want to make you aware that you are not alone right now. It might feel like you're completely separated from society because we're all literally indoors, but you can pick up the phone, you can text your friends, families, anyone else to reach out because you are not alone through all of this. Give yourself a break. Your body will need it, your brain needs it even more sometimes. So just go easy on yourself in this time of stress. Because it's unusual and I imagine that a lot of people are panicking at the moment and I can understand why. But please, just respect yourself and respect your neighbours and we'll all get through this together. And until then, I was normally I'd say go out there and smash it, your big ledge. Stay in and smash it, your big ledge. And I'll see you next Tuesday. Oh dear, that is indeed a swear.